Say hello to everybody. Say say hi to YouTube. Hey YouTube. Hey. She hates me. Hey guys, it's Alejandra here and welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know who I am, I am a transgendered woman and I have been on hormones for a year now. So this is my one year hormone update and I am here to give you guys the update on how I've been. I'm just going to kind of give you guys all the details on what has been going on in the last six months. I have not been able to sit down and actually film since my sixth hormone update. So I think it's going to be a little bit more noticeable changes. It's still hard to kind of put it all together in a video. Like it's definitely not as easy as it looks. So first off, I make these videos for other girls to have someone to relate to and to be able to have a place where we can share, you know, experiences and be able to give each other support because this isn't such an easy thing to go through. And I also like doing these videos for educational purposes for other people to understand that, you know, we're just like everybody else and to show everybody the reality of what we have to go through and the process of it. I also make these videos to give people a real perspective into a trans person's life and hope that it allows there to be less of a taboo. I think the more that we put ourselves out there and we are able to express you know, ourselves freely, and we can become a more main, we're slowly becoming more mainstream already, so it's definitely in the process. So I kind of want to take you guys back to when I first moved out to LA, just so that you guys get a better understanding of my situation and where I'm coming from. But when I initially moved out to Norwalk, I started working at a salon in Santa Monica. I was a hairdresser for about 10 years now. I started doing hair when I was 17. I'm still involved in the beauty industry. I'm just trying to do different things, but I still do hair and I do it freelance, but it's just not as frequent, which is totally fine because to be honest, I'm trying to be a lot more focused on my fashion design. It just makes it trickier because I've been doing hair for so long, but now that I'm trying to pursue my fashion design career, it has become a little bit trickier because it isn't making me money as of right now, but I've been able to work on all of my clothing and everything like that a lot more frequently than when I was working at a salon. It takes up a lot of your time. I didn't necessarily not want to work. I love working and I love making money and I love feeling independent, but the fact is that I needed to sacrifice a little bit of that to be able to work on my fashion. But anyways, moving out here, I started working in Santa Monica at a salon. After leaving my job in Santa Monica, I started focusing a lot more on my fashion design. I was just thinking to myself, I went to school for four years and the whole reason I moved out to LA was to pursue my fashion design. Even though I did stop doing hair in a salon, I didn't necessarily stop doing hair overall. Upon leaving Santa Monica, I actually started getting unemployment because I figured that it would be a really nice help to me so that I can focus on my fashion design. I feel like for a little bit I was kind of embarrassed that I was kind of getting help from the government, but you know what? Who gives a fuck? I needed the extra help. It's almost like they're your parents. As soon as my unemployment money was over, I was really blessed to start working for my brother's girlfriend who is a beauty influencer and she gave me this really awesome opportunity to be her assistant. It was something that I was super interested in. I aspire to also be a beauty influencer, but it's not as easy as it looks. It's a lot of hard work, and to be honest, I don't think I would even be able to do anything that I have done so far if it wasn't for her because of all the makeup that she has given me. Um, but definitely learned a lot. I'm so thankful for her and her the opportunity she gave me and eventually you know I started um, looking for other jobs 
within the makeup industry and I started applying to a lot of makeup counters and this brings us more to present time. I was definitely focused on finding a job for the longest time. I actually have a start date now and I will be working at NYX Cosmetics. Doing makeup has definitely been a very therapeutic thing for me during my transition and not only that, I find it to be a very huge aspect in being a woman. So makeup has definitely helped me feel a lot more comfortable in my skin. So just like everyone else, I have my set of insecurities and flaws and I definitely have my moments where I nitpick and I can definitely pick myself apart. But then I have my days where, you know, just thinking I'm the hottest bitch on this fucking earth. Main things that make me dysphoric is facial hair. Like, facial hair is one of the biggest things that makes me dysphoric. My bulge makes me dysphoric. Um, I usually try to keep that contained, but sometimes it kind of falls out of place, and I just can't stop thinking about it, and it gives me anxiety, and especially if I'm out in public or something like that, you know, I, I definitely start getting social anxiety if I start feeling any of these. So other things that make me dysphoric and all of these are things that are on my face. Kind of like everything down the middle is kind of my main concern. So my nose, my chin, and, or my nose, my chin, and my forehead. Um, starting off with my chin, I really feel like it's a little bit on the wider side. I would love to have a little bit more of a point to my chin. Um, another thing is this caveman forehead that I have, and it's like this whole brow section is just so intense, and it's just so masculine. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that I am not attractive, love what I got going on, but I definitely would like to kind of soften everything a little bit more. It's not even like I want to look like a whole different person. I just want to soften everything up a little bit more. I would want to get things done to my face um, solely for the fact that I want to appear a little bit more feminine and these things that I get dysphoric about tend to make me not feel that. I was always very dysphoric with my voice and even when I identified as a male I always felt that my voice was too feminine and I felt that I wish my voice was deeper and you know I wanted to be a lot more masculine and now it's something that makes me insecure because now I feel like my voice is too manly and I feel like it's too deep and sometimes it really to be honest that's one of the main reasons why sometimes it's hard for me to film these videos because I just tend to like nitpick at my voice and I'm just like, you know what, who gives a fuck? Like, I can't change that. If you can't control it, don't stress out about it. Another thing is my shoulders. I try to stay away from wearing certain things because I feel like it kind of emphasizes how broad my shoulders are. I try to kind of like sit up a little bit straighter because I feel like it kind of pushes back my shoulders a little bit, you know, so it doesn't look so big, but I definitely feel like that is definitely one of my, you know, things that bother me, and I notice that, you know, that's kind of been softening up a lot more, so it's definitely making it a little bit less dysphoric for me. So another thing that makes me dysphoric at times is definitely my height. I am a pretty tall person, and I am really fucking tall when I wear heels, so if I ever, you know, am out and about, I definitely am noticeable. I really enjoy being tall, don't get me wrong. I think it, it has its perks. I'm definitely content with my progress and how I'm going and everything that has, you know, been happening. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about insurance because I find it a very important aspect in transitioning, especially if you don't have, you know, the financial funds or the support that some people might have. And as soon as I turned 26, I got on that shit because I wanted to make sure that there was no interruptions with my treatment because I did start my treatment even before I turned 26. I think I was like, about to turn 26, but because of my parents having um, insurance, I was covered. Like I said, once you turn 26, you're kind of on your own. So what I highly recommend is going to your closest medical office or anything that is government help. So it makes it super beneficial for somebody like me who 
just moved out, is trying to do their own thing. I am on Medi-Cal, which is insurance for people who have low income. And it's been so nice because I've been able to get this far into my transition without having to pay a single thing. Even when I went and I got my tracheal shave done, I didn't have to pay for anything either. Um, my pills, I get them for free. My shots, which are bi-weekly, I get them for free. So really, it's super helpful, especially when you are going through something like this. And I mean, I'm going to be going through this for the rest of my life. So for a lot of people who think that one day you transition from one to the other, that is such a misconception and a misunderstanding. I'm sure it doesn't help that you see a lot of women who are trans that are in the public eye that have the financial capability. So although my insurance covers a lot of my treatment, there are still a few things that I do pay for myself. And those things include laser hair removal for my legs and my face. They do cover one form of facial hair removal and I was going to do that one, but it was definitely way too long of a um, process and it seemed a lot more painful. I will definitely, let me look it up really quick. Electrolysis. It is called electrolysis. I don't know why I didn't know that. I totally knew that because I totally even went to go see an electrolysis. And she even recommended me to go get a couple laser hair removal sessions before they start. So one thing that I noticed every time I would go in and get my shot is that when I would initially get my shot, I would feel so much more happy. I would feel energetic. I would feel way more at peace with myself. And then I want to say maybe halfway into the second week, I would start getting less motivated, a little bit more depressed, definitely a lot more tired, which I started to catch on. And I realized that it's probably because I have all this estrogen in me and the closer I get to, you know, being due for another shot, I start getting more of that testosterone to start kind of rising up. So I feel like I'm constantly going up and down and it's just like a constant battle of, you know, trying to, trying to like be conscious and aware of telling myself that like, I'm cool. Like it's just the hormones and it's just like everything doing its thing, but it doesn't help when you have, like, other life things going on, like, you know, so it's just, like, a constant up and down thing, but I am a strong woman and I can handle it. So things that I can say that I have noticed is the fact that I have become a little bit more dysphoric, even though I have been on the treatment for about a year now. I noticed that my body is looking a lot more feminine and there is things that bother me about my face that still appear very masculine to me only because of the fact that I'm seeing the contrast between certain things now. They're just things that I can't really change and that is a one misconception, one misunderstanding that I think a lot of people might have is the fact that your bone structure overall of your body will change and that is not the case. Um, a lot of it is fat redistribution so if somebody's face might appear a little bit different or their body might appear different it's not necessarily because their bone structure has changed it is more so because their fat has moved to different places so that happening it has made other things look more masculine at least to me so hormone replacement therapy is definitely a process, but it's ridiculously crazy how fast changes can happen. And there's subtle things that you can do to kind of help your body start, you know, producing finer and less hair throughout your body. Um, and something to kind of help with that is a laser. I've been going to Sev Laser in Orange County. I found this really great Groupon um, deal. Uh, it was like six sessions for $200 or something like that, which is like super unheard of. So I started getting laser hair removal on my legs and my face. I've only had one on my face so far. And so you could kind of see, I mostly get a lot more darkness in through here, but I mean, literally just one session has reduced the amount of hair and the hair growth that has been happening so i can only imagine how much of a difference just a couple more sessions is gonna do i seriously can't wait till i have no facial hair because i just feel like the ugliest creature in the fucking planet like there's nothing worse than 
having to get ready, but then you're like, oh yeah, I have to fucking shave my face. It's just an extra step that I just find so unnecessary. So I started waist training and um, I started maybe, I want to say six months ago. So as the beginning of the year, maybe, I don't really feel like I've noticed that crazy of a difference because um, the hormones I feel like are doing a significant amount already, but I haven't been wearing it for that long. I started using it and I wear it pretty much every day. Um, I was wearing it, I wore it a couple times to the gym and then realized that that was like the worst idea you could ever do just because it gets so sweaty and you just can't wear it like the next day because I noticed that if you do wear it because it is kind of wet and there's that moisture because I feel like even just wearing it, it creates moisture and it started kind of giving me like a rash on my skin. So I stopped wearing it. I like let it air dry outside for a while. I started wearing it again, but I wouldn't wear it to work out. Um, but I do recommend if you do want to wear one um, for working out, even though you want to make sure you're kind of getting good amount of breath, you know, when you're working out. So I don't know how really good that is, but if you do want to wear one, I would recommend getting a separate one for that. I bought mine off, I think it's angelcurves.com. I just know that the brand is Angel Curves. I love it. It's a good quality one and so far so good. I can't wait to like keep wearing it to start seeing a little bit more results. My body, like I said, has been significantly changing already. Um, there has been a lot of fat redistribution already happening. I mean, you can, you know, obviously guess where some of those main places would be, but definitely I've noticed that a lot of it has gone to my, um, like bottom half of my body. Um, I feel like my butt has definitely filled out a little bit more even though I still don't have a butt and I'm constantly trying at the gym. Um, I definitely feel like my butt has changed a lot and I also feel that a lot of it has gone to my like inner part of my thigh into the like under here like this part because I noticed that it like jiggles a lot so it's like I feel like a lot of my fat has gone like into that part of my leg but yeah like I definitely feel I mean I can't really say that I feel like I have hips you know I'm starting to kind of get a little bit of a softer more feminine shape I feel like I work out a lot too so I feel like it's definitely affecting you know like my body overall I feel like some girls they start off with a little bit more fat so like your body has a little bit more fat to work with whereas me i work out a lot and <clears throat> i tend to not eat like a lot of junk food and stuff like that so i feel like it's really affected the way that my boobs have like i felt like for a little bit i was like wow my boobs are getting really big and then i feel like i started working out a lot more I also feel that it also has to do with my diet. I have a vegan lifestyle. So my food is plant-based, so it's going to be a little bit trickier to kind of put on weight. I mean, I do eat a lot of things high in fat, like avocados and like peanut butter and like nuts and like things like that, but I feel like it is a lot easier to put on some fat if you are eating processed and all that junk food, but that is just not my thing. From the last video to this video, I feel like it might not be the biggest difference. They're definitely there and they're, you know, growing and I'm really happy with, you know, the progress I've made. I definitely want to get a boob job only if I don't go at least up to a B. I don't plan on doing any surgeries or anything done to myself. Um, at least for a good two years. I have to be on hormones for two years either way to even get my bottom surgery. So, um, I mean, if I were to get anything, like, done surgically or, like, cosmetically, which is also not covered by insurance, FYI. Um, so a lot of these things that are cosmetic, like facial feminization surgery, breast augmentation would not be covered. Like anything like that is not covered. Bottom surgery is definitely covered. Um, the, there is a, um, you have to wait for at least two years, like I said, and be on the medication for two years, and then you go through another gender assessment. 
Um, some people don't decide to do bottom surgery, and that's really a personal choice. It doesn't make you more or less of a woman. My choice is definitely I want to get bottom surgery. Um, I feel that I become the most dysphoric when I'm at the gym as well. That is something, and that is the reason why, is because of down there. Um, I just, I'm, even no matter how good of a tuck I can do when you're wearing yoga pants and you're just moving and you're doing stretches and you're doing all this stuff, it's not going to stay in place and I am not going to tape myself or anything like that. Like, because even if I did, it would get fucking sweaty and the tape would probably fucking fall off. I noticed that I just get really uncomfortable and I don't, I don't feel like I get my full best workout because I'm too busy in my head thinking about, oh my god, like down there and like everyone else. And it really gets to me sometimes when it does come to like me putting on things and I can't wear them for that reason. Like, I feel like a lot of like tighter and it's usually like knit or like just like things that cling onto the body. Like, I feel like it's really hard for me to wear things like that because a, it's tricky to find underwear that kind of hold it back already, and then usually if they do hold it back really good, they give you some fucking fat underwear lines or some shit like that, so it's like, it's hard to wear things, and that makes it a problem. I just feel like I would feel, like, aesthetically I would love my body a lot more, and I just feel like it would make me feel a little bit more like a woman. Like I said, it isn't something that I, you know, feel like defines a woman, even though other people might not understand that, but it doesn't define you as a woman. I feel like there is way more qualities and characteristics of being a woman. There is just such a variety and diverse group of women. Although this process is quick and changes tend to happen really rapidly, I think there is a huge misconception that, you know, it's something that happens overnight. I know that I've been approached to a couple times and asked, oh, so when are you transitioning? And it's like, I kind of been doing it. Like, it's not something, like I said, that just happens like overnight. It's something that takes time and these changes are slowly happening. And to be honest, sometimes I don't even notice them until I like see somebody who I might have not seen for a while or I like see a picture that I come across. So a lot of the physical changes that I have been experiencing are the same as past videos that I have said. Maybe some things that might be a little bit different is that the fact that my arms tend to like look a little less veiny even though I still have a lot. I've always been super veiny to be honest but I definitely notice that I'm less veiny um, and another thing that I notice is that tucking has become a lot easier because my testicles are getting less because my testicles are shrinking. They're not getting less. Well, they are getting less, but they're shrinking. Other things that I've noticed is obviously like more fat redistribution. I definitely feel that my um, muscle right here is definitely starting to go down a little bit more. I mean, just like things like that, you know, I mean, you could just kind of tell the obvious changes. So I definitely noticed a lot of changes with my body. Um, obvious changes are kind of, you know, self-explanatory, but I mean... My body is definitely has changed. Quite a bit. So I definitely noticed that my legs are starting to get like this like softer, squishier feel to them. They don't, even though, yes, they do look toned and they are, you know, muscular. I feel like I still feel like this soft layer over that, I guess you can say. Um, my breasts obviously are still growing and continue to grow. Like I said, I definitely feel that they have shrunk a little bit. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I definitely feel that they are starting to get smaller. After every three shots, I have to go get a blood test. So the purpose for this blood test is to see where my estrogen and testosterone levels are at. For the past six months, they haven't been able to get my estrogen levels high enough. My testosterone levels seem to be very suppressed. So the highest that my estrogen levels have ever gotten to was 69. I would get that number. Once I do, I'm gonna be able to do self-injection, which is gonna be amazing because I, I won't have to make 
being there a priority wherein I can just easily do it myself. It does make it inconvenient sometimes to have to go to the hospital when you might be out of town or something like that. So depending on these blood tests determines whether or not I'm going to get a medication increase. So anytime that my levels aren't high enough, they raise up my estrogen. So I've been raised several times already and I'm pretty sure I'm at 12. I don't know if it's milligrams or whatever milliliters. I don't know, but in the injection thing I started off at, I can actually see really quick. So it's milliliters, um, 12 milliliters. I started off at eight milliliters and I ended up with taking 12 milliliters every two weeks. And I also have to take a daily pill, not one, but three actually, um, of the same one, but I take one in the morning and two at night. And one thing that I wanna disclose about this pill is that this pill is actually a high blood pressure medication. So this high blood pressure medication that I am taking is called spironolactone, and this pill happens to have testosterone blocking side effects. So for this reason, it is commonly prescribed in combination with estrogen for HRT. Because I don't have high blood pressure issues, I tend to get very dizzy and drowsy with the medication, and it is only enhanced because I am a recreational marijuana smoker, which definitely affects your blood pressure. I've come up with this theory that might explain as to why my estrogen levels won't level out. And I really think it's because of my diet. I feel that I do consume a lot of soy in my diet. And if you guys didn't know, soy contains high levels of estrogen. And when your body produces too much estrogen, it actually turns it into testosterone. I definitely try to consume as least soy in my diet nowadays as possible just because I feel like it does affect the fact that my estrogen levels are so low. They need to be somewhere between the normal women's range of 100 to 200. So that pretty much wraps up this hormone update. If you guys have any more questions or maybe wanted me to go a little farther into something that I was talking about, if you guys are trans also, please leave me messages about things that you guys have experienced, maybe things that we share in common and things like that because I would really like to know um, if you're not trans and you just are curious and like watching my videos. I would like to hear any questions about, you know, anything you guys are curious about. I'm going to try to stay a lot more current and not slack off. Um, I think it'll be a little bit easier now that I am not stressing out trying to find out ways to, you know, survive now that I have a job and I am going to be a little bit more stable. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so happy I got to sit down and kind of, you know, reconnect with everybody and just kind of share what's been going on in my life. I would appreciate it if you guys gave this video a thumbs up just so that I know that you guys are loving the content that I am creating. If not, then at least drop a comment so that you can let me know as to how I can make it better. Don't forget to subscribe so that you guys get notifications as to when I post new videos. I also like posting about like makeup and like things like that, you know, so definitely subscribe and I will catch you guys on my next video.